but I want to give a huge amount of credit to everybody up on the stage and everybody who's tried them in the field for having the bravery, the intellect, and the support from the communities that they've needed to be able to engage in these kinds of interventions. These are heroes that are up here with us. They're going to be talking to us for the next hour. And I think we'll get a great deal out of it. We'll start out, first of all, hearing about the Vaquita situation. And we have Lorenzo rojas -Bacher. Thank you for being here. It's an honor to be in front of you. And thanks for the invitation and to the organizing committee of both societies. So in 2004 and 2014, we discussed in the International Recovery Team the CITU option for Vaquita, but we did not recommend it to the government of Mexico. So why did we reconsider this recommendation? You've seen this graph before, but basically because the in-situ approaches were not working. The graph here shows the population trend of the vaquita with the management actions that were supposed to eliminate bycatch one way or the other. Now, if we put numbers to this decline, you can see that from 1997 to 2016, we had a 95% decline of the vaquita population. And from 2011 to 2016, the vaquita faced a precipitous population decline as a result of the resurgence of the large-scale illegal totoba fishery fueled by the black markets in Hong Kong and China. Also in 2016 and 2017, we recovered eight vaquitas that necropsy showed they were killed in gill nets, probably totoba. And adding to these in 2015 and 2016, our interinstitutional fishing gear removal program removed more than 400 illegal nets most of them for Totuala, and this showed that enforcement was not working. Under these circumstances, the International Recovery Team Sierra concluded in 2017 that the only hope for the survival of the species in the short term is to capture the kidas and bring them to human care. And this is how the Kira Conservation Protection and Recovery was born, the Kira CPR. And in late 2016 and early 2017, we started planning the fieldwork for Vaquita CPR. We were very clear the risk we were facing. Vaquita could die in the process of catching to transportation or to housing. However, we thought that the risk was greatly outweighed by the certain death of entanglement in legal nets in the wild. To mitigate this uh, risk, we developed a stepwise approach. First, we had to find the animals using acoustic and visual methods, then we'd catch, rescue them, and assess. And if the animal was doing OK, then we would take it to initial housing. And if everything went OK there, to a long-term sanctuary, and then with the hope that sometime would reach reduction to a gallium-free upper Gulf of California. This is the first animal we catch. It was a young female, six to eight months old. Acclimatation we attempted, and we did it in our land pools and in our seed pens, and the animal was too stressed and was released hours later. The second animal was a mature female that seemed very calm and looked like a very good candidate for exito management. Acclimatation was attempted in the seed pens, but the animal was too stressed and release was attempted, but it did not work, sadly. The necropsy showed that it was a 15-year-old female with no evidence of pregnancy or lactation. What we learned from these two vaquitas is that probably this species is susceptible to stress, basically cardiomyopathy. I have been asked several times why did we not start catching vaquitas for ex situ uh, uh, approach earlier. And basically, there are management and technical issues. Up to 2014, the recovery team had rejected the CEDU options because we felt that the animals had a better chance to survive in the wild and in captivity for the reasons I expressed before. But also, we had positive signs. So we had a gillnet exclusion zone for 2015. 
We had a permanent bill man cooking for 2017. Alternative fishing gear was being developed by an international group of experts, they're all sitting here. The Mexican Navy was taking over enforcement. There was a compensation scheme, which I will talk about later, for fishers not to fish. And the President Obama met the President of Mexico to discuss uh, vaquita conservation. And then there are the, I would call the political issues. So we're 24, and again in 2010, the Organic Fisheries Research Institute and the head of the National Fisheries Institute, Tomo, had the way to solve the problem. Catch them all, ship them to SeaWorld, and you have your vaquitas and we have our fishing. So the failure to stem the vaquita decline despite years of in-situ research, direct interventions, negotiations with government agencies, fishermen, and the vaquita CPR emergency effort can provide Probably some lessons for other rapidly declining species reduced to small populations because of bycatch. In the map here, I want to show you where Mexico is. I don't see the light. Oops. Well, anyway. You see, the, the country with deep red is Mexico, and this is a map of corruption. You can, you can also, also see several species, species or subspecies that are having serious, serious conservation, conservation problems. problems. Choose your species and country and see where you are. So, so lessons learned on the situations and conditions when it's it might be compromised. compromised. And, and here is the government's problems and its twin, evil twin, twin corruption. corruption. Mexico, for example, illegal fishing has been estimated to be up to 60% of our national production. The graph shows to the right the governance of Mexico has gone from bad to worse, from zero to minus 0.12. And at an international level, it has been demonstrated that the presence of illegal fishing is directly related to low governance. It's very difficult to implement bycatch mitigation measures when we have decades of lacking a proper fisheries governance, and this is the sum of all the elements that constitute a proper management fisheries, the legal, the social, the economic, the political, and the technical. Compensation scheme, scheme turned to be a perverse incentive, and corruption was done by all fishers, government officers, etc. And let me say one more thing. Although eliminating gill nets seems like a simple problem, in reality, the task involves major social and cultural changes. And very importantly, political will to develop alternative fishing gear and maintain livelihoods with a political and social structure not to be right to corruption and dominated by organized crime. Species are disappearing more quickly in countries with the worst governance scores. And corruption undermines conservation when it pays better, when a fisherman can make from $500 to $10,000 US dollars per kilogram of buche, or like a fisherman that we know that made $116,000 US dollars in one fishing day. It's really hard because then corruption allows for illegal fishing and eclipses any legal fishing, alternative fishing gear, implementation, compensation schemes, etc. Now, conservation will not work if it is not a priority for all stakeholders. And we have been incapable of bringing on board the fisheries authorities and not the fishermen. And you either take the hard decisions involving fisheries like banning gillnets or the species will go extinct. And the other lessons learned in issues with conservation interventions is if you don't do your conservation homework on time, then any unexpected single event can drive population to extinction very, very fast, as you can see in the graph here. Captive care is a potential valuable tool for recovering marine mammals, but building the capacity for, cap uh, for captive care, care takes years and should be initiated well before you need it urgently. Exito was a last minute effort in the face of extinction. Too few animals left to take a precautionary approach, and learning curve is steep, and we didn't have to have a learning curve. So, Exito options are to serve conservation. The information critical to success will be gathered when populations are still relatively large. 
I saw in us when should what we started. Should have we begun as soon as Gilded's mortality? We knew it was unsustainable, or when we lost 57%, 57% decline in 2008, and we still have 100 animals. We need to think or or purpose guidelines for careful planning of phase conservation interventions as human cause mortality drives populations from the thousands to a few hundreds. The Serva team was concerned that ex to actions could jeopardize the in situ actions. But the lessons for the Vaquita case is that managers must be convinced that to, to, to avoid extinction, developing action plans that consider both in situ and ex situ options when populations are still in the numbers in hundreds. And another important thing is effective communication with communities is vital for the conservation of biodiversity. I'd like to thank all the Vaquita CPR team, all the co-authors that have participated and supported us in many years, and muchas gracias por su atención.